let's look at the Laplace transform of an exponential. And this function here is e to the at times the step function ut. And we're considering a to be real. So first of all, I like always to plot the function to visualize it. So it's a time domain function. Uh, the step function means it's zero for negative time. And then uh, it's if a is positive, let's draw that example, then this is a function that increases exponentially. Now, we know that for a Fourier transform of this function, uh, we're not going to be able to take the Fourier transform because the area uh, is under this curve uh, is increasing. The energy is unbounded. So it's not going to have a Fourier transform. But we can take a Laplace transform over certain regions, and that's the region of convergence. So let's uh, explore that. Uh, the Laplace transform uh, equals the integral and from negative infinity to infinity of e to the at times ut times e to the minus st dt. Okay, and don't forget this is um, also the Fourier transform of a weighted function. And we'll, I'll show that in a minute. First of all, let me just write this, uh, collect the terms here, and, and in fact, uh, we can say you see that it's an integral from 0 to infinity, and the step function equals 1 over this range. So it's e to the minus s minus a t dt. OK, so uh, maybe it's worth uh, actually writing that out. Uh, to show the Fourier transform that I was talking before. Don't forget s equals sigma plus j omega. So what's another way of looking at this? I think it helps to understand it. So this is 0 to infinity of e to the a minus sigma t times e to the minus j omega t dt. So this is the Fourier transform uh, of, a, of this function times the unit step. Uh, and let's uh, think about what this, this overall function is here that we're trying to do the integral of, but uh, remind ourselves that it's also the Fourier transform of this function in here, uh, with the step function, of course. And for that, if, that, if this has finite energy, uh, then we'll be able to take its Fourier transform. So it's not the original signal now because it's weighted by the sigma, and that's part of the Laplace. So let's let's plot this function here uh, for various different values, for example. So let's consider if sigma equaled uh, zero. So if sigma equals zero, and if a was positive, uh, let's just um, think about this function for uh, uh, an example and help us to understand what the Laplace transform is doing. So if, if sigma equals 0 and a was positive, then this is an exponential which increases with time, and it's multiplied by a complex exponential. This complex exponential has a unit, uh, has a constant amplitude, and let's draw the real part of that. Um, so this is a, the real part of this is a cos wave, and this is a positive growing um, function, so this would be a cos wave with a growing amplitude. Okay, and it times the unit step function, so it's zero negative. Now, clearly this function here, for which we've drawn for sigma equals zero, this function here clearly growing, this integral here is going to, as it grows, is going to be infinity. Okay, so we're not going to be able to evaluate that for this value of sigma. What about if sigma equaled a, for example. So if sigma equaled a, sigma equals a, then this would be e to the 0, which is 1. So that function would be, the real part would just be the cos waveform not growing. Okay, so that would be this waveform here. And this waveform, this one here, this one is for sigma equals a. And so that one would be not growing, not expanding, staying the constant peak amplitude of that cos wave all the way to infinity. And what about if sigma was uh, bigger than a? So if sigma was bigger than a, so in here, then sigma is bigger than a, this would be a negative exponential for a positive. 
and then this function would be a decreasing function. Uh, so this would be a negative, so it's a decreasing exponential. And so this function now would be the cos waveform decreasing. Okay, and now this waveform will have an integral that we can evaluate. Okay, so this is really an important point about what the Laplace transform is doing and how it's different from the Fourier transform. It's weighting the function here by an exponential uh, with a sigma. So it's either growing or flat or decreasing. And for the ones that are decreasing, for values of sigma, where the overall function is decreasing, then you can take this interval and ev evaluate this integral. Okay, and I think you can see there, for any value of sigma bigger than a, you're going to be able to evaluate this integral. And this is where we get the idea of the region of convergence. So if we look back up to here, so uh, if the real part, because uh, sigma is the real part of s, so if the real part of s is bigger than a, then this in the brackets will be a positive number uh, in the real part, and therefore a negative out in front means you're going to be able to evaluate it. So we can probably, easiest to evaluate it from here, I wrote this one out so that we could understand it in terms of the waveforms and the relationship to the Fourier transform. So now the integral of this clearly is uh, the is itself the interval of an exponential times the term out in front of the time, in this case, inverted out the front. And then we evaluate it from those limits and we see that this is 1 divided by s minus a and that this holds, as we say, we know that this holds only when the real part of this thing in the brackets is positive. So that's the real part of s is bigger than a. And then we can plot that as a region of convergence uh, in the S plane where we're plotting the, uh, the real part and the imaginary part. And this is the S plane. This is A. We said here, if we draw it for A positive, for all values where the real part of S, that's the sigma, is bigger than A, this is this whole region here. So for all the values of S that are in this region, we can evaluate the Laplace transform. But for the values of s which are outside this region, on this side, we are not able to evaluate the Laplace transform. Why can't we? As we can see from this picture, for those values of s, there's not enough damping from the exponent, the real part of the exponential that we're multiplying our original signal by in our Laplace transform.